Is your mic off? Because I can't hear you. Uh, no, I'm just just about to start now. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa minna tabi'ahum bi isani ila yawm al-din wa ba'd. Uh, we'd like to welcome you to this week's class of the Islamic Creed. Uh, Brother Anna, Assalamu alaikum, can you hear me? You had to uh, turn, um, it says call over internet. If you're on your phone, you hit the option call over internet so you can be able to talk. All right, so we'd like to welcome you all to this week's class of the Islamic Creed. Uh, Sister Sadia, since you're the only one on here from last week, uh, you might be called on quite a bit for review. Okay, I'm getting there. All right, so do you remember the name of the book? I know it's the Islamic Creed, um, the Arabic name for it. I can't tell you. Okay, all right, the Islamic Creed is called uh, Risala fi Ilm at Tawheed. So they, uh, it's called the introduction to the Islamic Creed because in this book, uh, we're not covering all of the things that we need to know for Akita. Uh, we're just talking about Allah who's crowned with the Ayla, uh, his necessary attributes, and then what is necessary for the prophets, alayhim salam. So uh, we're gonna cover that in the next part. Uh, Cause you know, there are other parts of Akita that we had to believe in, like, you know, uh, hellfire and paradise and crossing the Sirat and punishment in a grave and all of those things that we will cover in the text after this. But right now, this is just dealing with Allah's attributes. All right, so uh, to, uh, let me see, to uh, just a review, a real quick review from last week. Do you remember the three ways that we learn knowledge? Yes. Um, the five senses. Uh -huh. and and true report. The five senses. Intellect and true report. Okay, good, Ahsan, that's good. So the five ways we learn knowledge is first by the senses, you know, there, you can't learn anything without your five senses, you know. And then after that, uh, the intellect, the sound intellect, you know, one, a sound intellect meaning one is in a mentally disabled or the like, uh, you know, that they're, they're conscious. And that's how you actually learn knowledge uh, before you learn what we know as Islamic knowledge. And then the third way is um, uh, truthful reports. So we said those truthful reports, there are two kinds. Sister Sadia, you remember? Um, mutawatir. Mm. Um, yeah, mutawatir. What does mutawatir mean? <laughs> That's a mass transmission that um, it exists. Yeah, mutawatir uh, means uh, mass transmitted. Uh, that means basically that uh, information is uh, related by so many people that all of them couldn't possibly be making it up. All right. And that's how the ayahs of the Quran actually were revealed, you know. So, just as an example of mutawatir. And then we have uh, what's the other um, mode of uh, the two types of. Uh, um, the truth of the messenger is the culbert of Rasulullah Alameen, the report of truthful messenger. Yeah, yeah, the, the reports of a truthful message, mean, mean, messenger, meaning that the only way that we, uh, you know, we can know about some of the stuff that we know about, like some of the, the alama to sa'ad, signs of the hour, or things, the description of paradise, and the description of hellfire, and, you know, a lot of things that the Prophet Islam told us, we only get know because we believe that they are truthful messengers. And this is one of their uh, tr uh, characteristics uh, that they cannot lie, all right? Okay, what else we need to cover from last week? Um, okay, so we started talking about the attributes and the first one, when we say three categories of Allah's attributes that they, uh, when we talk about them, when we talk about Allah, there are three things that we're talking about. What is blank, what is blank, and what is blank? Wajib. Yeah, what is wajib? What does mean, what is wajib? It's necessary. Okay. Ja'id is possible. And ja is. Mustahil is impossible. Yeah. yeah, the second one is ja'is. 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 Okay. 
Jazz meaning something that is possible for a lawless panel with either, for example, uh, that he that he can punish you or forgive you, right? Uh, what is necessary for a law as one of the you know these attributes that we're going to uh, discuss, and something that is uh, mustahil. What is mustahil? Mustahil is something that is impossible. Okay, and when we don't, when we say impossible, we're not saying uh, something like uh, a law is a law is incapable of doing something. We mean impossible with respect to His Majesty that we cannot conceive something, you know. All right, and what was the other line that we said? We said with these attributes, the blank of them is inconceivable and the blank of them is impossible. Yeah, you up, sis? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> What was the question? <laughs> I said, we talk about these attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was a, a sentence that we gave. We said that the blank of them are inconceivable and mm -hmm. the blank of them are impossible. When we talk about these, these necessary attributes for Allah. Um, wait a minute. The absence of them is inconceivable and the opposite of them is impossible? Oh, alhamdulillah. You took notes, huh? I did. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Okay. And you supposed to remember that. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So with respect to these necessary attributes, the absence of them are inconceivable, meaning that we cannot, we cannot, the, the sound mind cannot conceive that the absence of these necessary attributes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be who he is. And the opposite of them are impossible. Uh, and that's what we're going to be discovering. So keep that line in mind uh, as we go. All right. So let's go to let's go to the screen. Uh, let me get my screen up. Uh, how do I get this up? Hold on one second. All right, so now we'll continue, inshallah. All right, now the goal of this class, okay, we turned, we talked about that, the five sentence, sentence uh, five senses. All right. Okay, slide show. Okay, slide. All right, can you see the screen? No. Okay, so we talked about lost attributes, the 20 attributes are covered in the text. And these 20 are uh, categorized in three categories as well. Uh, so we're gonna go over them. But the main point of this course is that I want us to know these attributes and their opposites. So as we go through for those who are attending and then those who may watch later on, uh, we're gonna do them in a way that you have to memorize, all right? So when we say attributes are necessary, they are what makes Allah Allah and makes them absolutely unique. So when we talk about these necessary attributes, they are uh, Allah, they cover Allah's his that, his sifat, and his af'al. We'll learn that in another later on down the line. But when we talk about Allah's essence, his that, his self, that he is absolutely unlike anything. And in his sifat, his, his descriptions, his attributes, he is, uh, he is absolutely unique and unlike anything. And in his af'al, in his actions and what he does, he is absolutely like anything. So all of these attributes will cover that. So we said the three things covering the attributes that are necessary, wajib, possible, jaiz, and impossible, mustahil. All right, so those are the three terms. And yes, Sister Sadia, you said that uh, you got it right. The absence of them are inconceivable and the opposite of them are impossible. So we talked about al wuju that's the first one, which means existence. And that it is one of Allah's eternals, eternal and everlasting attributes, as all of his attributes are eternal and everlasting. So when we say wujud, that he exists without a beginning, without an ending, and without a place. All right. And we talked last week about the proof, which is the creation. All right. And what do we say about the creation? Says you there. 
I'm here. What do we say about the creation? His, the creation of, hold on. Like, what's the creation of the attributes or Allah himself? Uh, we said about the, his creation is what? Is a, um, it's a what? Hmm. We talk about a proof. Oh. Um, hold on. It's a sign of his existence. Meaning that the rational, our rational minds will tell us that all of this in creation could not have existed except that it had a creator. Like our rational minds, when we reach a certain age, we, we, we understand that, you know, the sun rises, somebody had to create it. The moon, the stars, the seasons, all of the things in creation, animals being born. And uh, we mentioned, you know, sometime in our life, we ask, you know, we ask our parents, where, where do we come from? Mm -hmm. We understand by our own rational judgment that we came from somewhere, you know, right? So, and so we had some type of beginning. So uh, we 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 at one time was non-existent, you know. So Allah subhanahu wa taala's attribute is al wujud, and its opposite is al adam, mm -hmm. right? So wujud is necessary for him, and al adam is uh, impossible for him, right? So we should know these two attributes, existence, al-wujud, and al-adam is non-existence, all right? We're only gonna cover a few each week uh, because I want you to be able to memorize them. Hey, Anish, you there, brother? Sound like him, you there? Can you hear me out? Yeah, I can hear you, Sound like him. Well, like Sanaa, what's up, man? I'm not just laying here listening and okay. learning. Alhamdulillah. All right. It's glad to have you aboard. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me see. Can you see the screen now? Yes. All right. So so that's the first attribute of Allah and he that he exists. So we can't, the rational mind cannot uh uh can't 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 uh vision Allah who's found with Allah not existing. So this is what it makes a law, a law it makes him absolute, absolutely unique because he exists without anything to or cause him to exist, without any beginning and without any any need for existence. All right. So 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 the second one is Al Kidam. So Al Kidam was one of Allah's everlasting and attributes, and he that he is eternal with no beginning to his existence. And the proof is. Were he to be originated, he would have needed an originator, just like everything in creation. But for Allah to spend with the Allah, this is impossible, and this is what makes Allah Allah, and this is why we believe in Him, in His Majesty, in His in, in His in His grace, because He absolutely be, uh, exists without any beginning. Because this uh, refutes the argument that people have called infinite regression. You know, they say that everything goes back and has a beginning, and something came before, it, and something came before it. So they say that because of that, then Allah had to have a beginning as well. And this is not something that we believe. So this is what make Allah absolutely unique that he put the creation in existence and he is without any kind of beginning because everything that came into existence had a beginning. So, and that's what, you know, and that that's the only possible and rational thing that you can, that anybody can come up with, whether they Muslim or not. That Allah couldn't have had a beginning, you know. That's why He, <laughs> that's why He's God Almighty, you know. So the proof that we have here is in Quran in uh, Surah Hadid, Surah fifty-seven, Ayat three. He says, "Who will awalu, will akhiru, will zahiru, will batinu?" That He is the first, and He is the last, and He is the apparent, and He is the hidden. All right. I know they. Uh, oh, I should have used the translation I put on here. He is the first and the last, the ascendant. And the intimate, all right, all right. Ascendant, um, I don't know what that means in English, but the here means that he is the apparent, all right. And batin means that he is the intimate, or he is the here. Your screen is freezing. So Allah who spent with the Ayla, when his he is attributed with this attribute called Al-Kidam, 
meaning that nothing in the universe existence, none of that existed before he existed or none of that existed alongside with him. So Allah who's planning with the Allah, he is as he ever was and everything after that came into existence by his will and by his power, all right? Is that is that clear? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I know that seems like common sense, but you know, the ulama have uh, kind of discussed this in detail. So, and then the opposite is al-hudu, which means, hudu means, uh, it, I don't know if you hear a word in there from hadith. You know, it came from the same uh, form, hadatha, means to something to narrate something or to begin something. So al-huduf means an event. An event happens that something has to start. Something needs a purpose to begin or something like that or an occurrence. Then Allah who's found with the Allah, it is impossible for an occurrence to happen to him. He doesn't exist because of something else or something happened. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't need any kind of event for him to begin, right? So, so we should remember that al kidam it is uh, the absence of Allah who's found with Allah being attributed to al kidam or beginninglessness. It is inconceivable for him. And the opposite, al hudud or having an origin, it is impossible for him, all right? So, so far we got al-wujud, which is existence, and its opposite is al-adam, um, al it's non-existence. Then we have al kidam beginninglessness, or pre, uh, what's the other word they use? Or uh, pre-eternal, or pre-existence, or uh, uh, non, non-beginning existence, I forget how they say it. Beginninglessness, and its opposite is al hudu which is an, um, an event or, or an occurrence, all right? Uh, everybody, everybody clear on that one? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, so now the next one is al-baqa, which is endlessness, all right? And so al-baqa is one of Allah who's found with Allah's attributes that is necessary for, for us uh, to believe in. Now, when we say, just a question as a review, when we say that it's necessary, uh, we say that it's not necessary to believe in the other attributes of Allah. Somebody has their mic on, y'all making a lot of noise. Who's making all that noise? It's me, Fahim. I'll try, I'm moving around. I'm not trying to sit down. No, just put your mute on. Just put your mute on until you, you talk. Okay. Yeah, just mic, mute your mic. All right, give me a second. All right, so we said, um, well, what was the question I just asked? Oh, I said, do we deny Allah's other attributes when we say that he has 13 or 20 necessary attributes? Is that what we do when we say that? No. Okay, explain, sis. Um, it's over here. All his attributes we believe in. Attributes. How, many, how many does he have? Um, from my understanding, from last week, it said twenty attributes and thirty we need to remember. I thought well, it was. We said, we said twenty, thirteen necess- thirteen or twenty necessary attributes, but the tw- the whole twenty, some of them are repeated because they the way they categorize, which we're going to cover in future lessons, but okay. they they're pretty much the same. But we mentioned in how deep that Allah was with the Allah, He has ninety nine names, right? Yes, yes no. Right, but does Allah only have only have ninety nine names? No. No, he has more. He has way more, right? But he has an infinite number of attributes that are befitting to him, right? So, and but we don't deny any of the other ones as long as they're in the proper context. We don't deny any of them. But we, well, well not we. The scholars have said that these 13 to 20 we're going to cover, that these are absolutely necessary for Allah. And what we mentioned, for instance, it's not necessary for Allah to spend with the Allah that he is Rahim. So that means he is attributed with the attribute of mercy, a Rahma. But he is not obligated, he's not obligated to give you mercy. But he is obligated to exist. He is obligated, that's how he is, that to have a beginning without to, I mean, not to have a beginning, to uh to exist without a beginning and then to uh to exist without an end. All right. So these are the attributes we cover. Is that is that clear? 
Yes. Okay. So al is one of his eternal attributes that he is everlasting. He does not end and nothing comes after him. All right. So proof is, had he not been non-ending, he would have had a beginning. All right. And it's impossible for a law of sperm without to have a beginning. And anything that has a beginning has an ending. Anything that comes into existence will cease to exist. And a lawless pen with the idol already exists without any beginning. And also anything that has existed that has a beginning and it changes over time. And a lawless pen with the idol, it is impossible that change takes place over him. This is a, a, a concept called tagayur. Let me put that in the chat box. It's something you should remember. This term is called, what's going on here? This is called at Tagaya. All right, which means change. So Allah is playing with the Allah, he does not undergo any kind of change whatsoever. And there's a saying that's attributed to uh, Imam Ali. May Allah have mercy on him. He said, Can Allah? that a law existed and there was no no place there was nothing in existence and he is now as he ever was meaning before anything the, the the heavens the earth everything that he put into existence before any of that existed he was so he doesn't undergo change because everything that undergoes change will you know goes from one state to another. It ages or uh, something happens to it to, to make it how it is. And Allah who's playing with the Allah is free and clear from that. All right. So al baqar meaning he has, he is non-ending and he sees, uh, he, he endlessness, he has no end. All right. So then we have the proofs here from, oh, and the opposite is al fanat which means extinction or annihilation or something that ceases to exist. So, we have an ayah in the Quran that actually uses both of these words. Well, Allah who's praying with Allah says, Kulu man alayha fan wa yabaka wajhu rabbika dhul jalali wal ikram. Everyone upon the earth will perish. Fan. Everyone will come to an end. And there will remain the face of your Lord, owner of majesty and honor. All right. So, uh, and this is one of the reasons why these attributes are important because there are other attributes like in this ayat when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wajhu Rabbika, the face of your Lord. So we don't believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a literal face. So this is a uh, meaning that, that it means something else. You know, that's why some of these uh, ayats uh, or some of these attributes for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or these descriptions, they, they are better left untranslated. For instance, when we, when we when we invite to someone to Islam, do we say we want you to come to the religion of peace? Do we say that? No. What do we say? Um, the religion of Islam. Yeah, we say we come to Islam. We don't translate that word, right? Exactly. Another word we don't translate. We said, well, we need you to become one who submits to Allah. What do we say? You need you to become Muslim? Yes, you become Muslim. You never hear anybody translating those words. And non-Muslims, they might not know the meaning of Islam and uh, Muslim, but they, they have an idea, but you never hear people translating those words, right? Right. So the same way with some of these attributes of Allah's plan with the Isla, like Waj and Ayn and, and stuff like that, and Yad, which uh, translate means hands, eyes, and face, right? But what we respect to Allah is with the Allah, they have to mean something else, you know, because the apparent meaning of those, you know, because someone could read face and, you know, and they think face means like a face, but just that Allah has a different face from what we know. And that's not correct belief, you know, and that's why some of these words should just remain untranslated, you know, because they do have another meaning, but you can't say exactly what they mean. You follow what I'm saying? All right. All right. So. Uh, so here we have endlessness, al baqar and it's opposite, al fana all right? So that's the proof from the Quran. All right, so that's the end of the slideshow. All right, so let's uh, get back to the Zoom. All right, where we at? 
All right. So now, uh, is there any other any other questions? No. All right. Just a quick review. Uh, the name of the book is called uh, Risala fi Ilm at Tawhid. All right, which means the uh, message in the knowledge of Tawhid. You remember the author's name? I don't. I didn't write that part down. Okay. I was back His in name is Imam Ibrahim Al Bajuri. Do you remember the, the title that we had? Uh, I sent you the link for the book, right? Yes, you did. I just didn't get to it just yet. I'm going. Okay. All right. So the Imam Al Bajuri, um, he lived in a lot of times. Um, he was known as the Imam Al Azhar, the Grand Imam of Al Azhar. Uh, and that's a prestigious title for, you know, prominent ulama. Do you remember what number he was? I just listened to the whole thing from last week, but I don't remember. Sorry. <laughs> That's right. Well, it was a list of the grand imams of Al Azhar. He was number 19. So okay. he had, you know, he had a prestigious title. I think he held the title for about four or five years. All right. So he died. He was 79 years old. So he wrote this little small treatise, which is covering the basics of Tawheed, all right, or the basis of Akita. Do you remember what we said Akita means? Go ahead, Anis, you're free to answer too. <laughs> Hold on, I'm sorry. I'm fixing my leg. <laughs> All right. So we said Akita, it means what? There's a linguistic meaning and then there's a, uh, there's a, a, a Sharia meaning. You remember, sis? Oh, I'm sitting here study talking to you and my mic is off. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Akita is basically something that I have to know as a Muslim and then something I have to understand, like with the proofs. Okay. Well, uh, a little more. Uh, that's true. If I can't hear you. Your mic is off or something. I can't hear you. My mic is off? Now I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. We said the word uh, Akida comes from the word Akada, Ya'akidu. And what does it mean? Um, it, the, what you said is true, but then there's another specific meaning I was looking for. A linguistic meaning. It means to tie something together. Yes. Tie a bundle of sticks together with a rope. But in yep. Islamic meaning, it means the the, the 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 beliefs that the majority of the Muslims believe. All yep. right, so it's tying all of those beliefs together. Yep. Why is the word? Why do they use the word Akira? You know, they didn't use the word Akira during the time of the Prophet of Islam, right? I don't know that now. You just told me. <laughs> no, they didn't <laughs> use this word because historically, you know, when the Prophet of Islam conveyed the beliefs to the Sahabas, and then they spread out. They started going to different um, societies and civilizations, and everybody didn't have the same belief. And then other people started, you know, introducing some of their beliefs. So, you know, the scholars decided after that they had to like bundle together what the Muslims actually believed because before it was spread down through word of mouth, and all the Sahabas knew, you know, and all the people who followed them knew, and the, and the ones who followed them knew. But as Islam started to grow and spread, you know, different ideologies started to creep in. So. They had to like put a, together a core kind of thing and they called it Akita, all right? But Akita wasn't used during the time of the Prophet of Islam, all right? So they use Iman, all right? So that's, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, it's not a big thing, it's just something to know. Um, okay. So Akita is like us saying our Iman, that's what you're saying? Yeah, Akita is Iman. Iman means belief, right? Akita is, you know, the things that you have Iman in. Yes. No. Okay. That's basically it. All right. Uh, uh, another word you hear, etikad, the beliefs of the Muslim, the things that tie the Muslim together because it's belief that makes us, you know, brothers and sisters in Islam and specific beliefs, you know, not just beliefs, but specific beliefs. All right. Um, so this is the book is talking about Akita and it's an introduction to Akita because it's not covering everything in Akita. It's covering uh, what is necessary to believe about Allah who's with the Allah 
and what is necessary to believe about his prophets. And then there are three categories we just mentioned. All right, they are wajib, jaiz, and mustahil. And what what are those what do those terms mean? Wajib is yeah. necessary. Uh huh. Mustahil is impossible. Uh -huh. That uh -huh. jaiz. Help me. Jazz. Jazz is. Jazz is. Is uh -huh. Right. So when we talk about these attributes of Allah, they're going to call, uh, fall under three categories. What is wajib to believe about him? What is uh, Jazz is? What is possible about Allah? And what is mustahil? What is impossible for Allah? So this, this book we're covering um, is going to cover those uh, 13, uh, 20 necessary attributes for Allah and their opposites. And it's likewise, it's going to cover the uh, attributes of the prophets, what we have to believe about them in the same way and their opposites. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? No. Okay. So we covered three attributes so far. What are they? Okay. Number one, al wujud. Al wujud. Al wujud. The opposite is al adam. Al adam. Al adam. All right. What does wujud mean? Existing. Uh huh. And its opposite is non-existent okay all right so uh what's the next one we covered al kidam al kidam kidam al kidam uh-huh and the opposite yeah what does al kidam mean i don't i don't speak arabic um, everlasting attribute. Allah is, ex is external with no beginning to his extinct. All right. I, I use a translation that they use in the book, which is called beginninglessness, or uh, we could say pre existing without a beginning. Okay. That Either one, as long as you know that Allah exists without a beginning. All right. Mm -hmm. And what is this opposite? Al Hudu. Al Huduth. Huduth. Yeah. What does Al Huduth mean? That's the um, occurrence, and to be um, with, and yeah, it, it, it started. Huh? He doesn't need an event for Allah. Doesn't need an event for Allah to start anything. It's yeah, like his, a current. Yeah. His beginning. Uh, he doesn't have any beginning, and his existence is not contingent upon anything. All right. Right. So Allah is not affected by anything. Like something that's an event on occurrence means it had a beginning, all right? Uh, and the third one is al -Bakal. I just gave you that one. Yeah, the endless, <laughs> no end. Okay, well, everlasting without an end. Yes. All right, and what is the opposite of al -Bakal? al fana al fana fana al fana al fana Okay. All right, so. All right, so we start with we just got those three for this week. I don't you know don't want to keep the class long, but we want to uh, uh, make sure you memorize these. Anis, you know you're responsible for these, and when we meet up, man, you gotta run them off. And I know you, I know you hear me too. <laughs> Mashallah. All right, so we're gonna uh, so next week. Uh, I want you to be able to run these off. Uh, the Allah who spent with the Allah has 13 or 20, we're going to say 20 necessary attributes. All right. Uh, I keep saying 13 to 20. It's really 20, but the 13 are the one we're going to concentrate on because the other uh, seven, they, some of them are repetition of the 13. And the way they categorize, categorize it, it'll make sense in the end. So, but right now I want to memorize it. So the first one, it, uh, we, we memorize in. 20 attributes that are necessary for a law, the absence of them are inconceivable and the opposite of them are impossible. The first one is al wujud, which means existing, Allah who's found with Allah existing eternally, without a place, without a need, and without anything existing along with him. 
and its opposite is al adam all right which means non-existence that it is inconceivable to th uh that uh it is impossible to think the rational mind to conceive that Allah has penned with Allah would be non-existent all right the second one <coughs> is uh hey, make me forget myself the second one <laughs> is al kidam excuse me is al kidam is which is beginninglessness or uh pre-existing without any beginning this is a necessary attribute for Allah that he exists without any beginning without you know and then this opposite is um al hoduf which means um yeah al hoduf right yes okay i'm losing my train of thought <laughs> al hoduf which means uh to be uh an uh, an occurrence or contingency so it is impossible to believe that allah has come with the ayla had an event or something that allowed him to begin all right so he began he exists without a beginning beginninglessness all right the third attribute is al baqar which is everlastingness or right, or endlessness and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists i mean he has he doesn't come to an end he doesn't cease to exist and its opposite is al fana all right which is to cease to exist or to be annihilated all right, and that is impossible for Allah to spend with Allah. Also, it's um, al wujud, al adam. Uh, uh, man, <laughs> al wujud, al adam. Uh, al adam. Huh? Al kidam. Yep. Um, al hudud. Yep. Al baka. Al yep. fana. You gotta excuse me because I learned these in a different uh a different pattern. So to relearn them like that is a little um yeah but i still got them all right so that's what i wanted to go for next week if you attend and uh hopefully for those who uh will re uh, view this uh at a later time please know those attributes because we want to keep going inshallah and we'll just have a little review uh before each class so are, are there any questions no any comments no okay and is she there bro I'm still look. I'm sitting here looking up more uh, Allah's attributes because I do have uh, his 99 attributes on my uh, as an app on my phone, and I was sitting there mm -hmm. trying to look up some other stuff as uh, so yeah. I can make sure I'll be on top of it. Yeah, yeah those 99 names. Uh, some of these attributes are extracted from those. Yeah, and I know because I know he has other names. That's what I was looking up right now, so that way I can have it also, so right. that I can read more of those. Right. Well, for instance. That we you won't find Al Wujud in those ninety nine names, right? Yeah, I know. That's why I was looking up the other ones, All so right. I can try to have it saved in my phone. All right. So for instance, now nah, you got to put these in your mind, man. Now, I know ones. what I'm doing is I'm gonna read it so that way I can have it already right here. All right, I I send you a writing, list, man. I was, I, yeah, because I wasn't writing because I'm sitting here uh, messing with my leg. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. So for instance, one of Allah's names is Al Qadim. Uh, which is be translated as the the ancient, or mm -hmm. you know, but his, one his at one of his attributes is al kidam the one we just covered today, that mm -hmm. he uh, exists without a beginning. All right, mm -hmm. all right. So well, as we go through these twenty, inshallah, uh, I want you guys to be able to memorize them and know their opposites, and then as we go on, we we explain them a little more in detail as we go along, and so. At the end, you'll be able to run these run these off. Mm -hmm. All right. Any any questions? No. Okay. No. Inshallah, we ask Allah who's come with the Ayla to accept this effort from us and to continue us in beneficial knowledge and uh, see us to its completion. I mean, I mean. All right. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashhadu la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum. Thank you.